Hello, welcome to the how-to video of the early release for the new Oki 811 service area editor. In this video, we will go over some general instructions to get you started, as well as showing you how to manually edit a service area, upload a full replacement of your service area, upload a file to merge with your service area, as well as download your service areas. To get started, we can click this Service Area Editor tab here in this left menu column. If you do not see the menu, click this menu button to show and hide. So once I click Service Area Editor, it will load me to the map. From here, I can select a dispatch code that is associated with my user account. After selecting a code, it will load in my current service areas in blue. To view your published service areas, simply click this Show Published checkbox. You will get this pop-up letting you know it could take some time to load the published service areas. Once your published service areas have loaded, you can see that these are this dark yellow color. And that is because they are overlaid with the current service areas. You may be asking, what's the difference between current and published service areas? So think of your current areas as a working copy. The current copy will be the same as your published copy until you start making edits to the current copy. And then any edits that you have saved will not be published until they have been submitted and approved by the Oki A11 GIS team. So the majority of the time, your current and published service areas should be the same. Now to hide my published, I can click the checkbox and now I'm left with the current service areas again. I can select this star button and this will turn off my current layer so I can turn on my published and just see published service areas as this bright yellow. And now I'm going to go ahead and turn back on my current copy and go ahead and hide the published. So another feature from this view is you can actually view previous sessions. If you click this search for previous dropdown, you can select a time frame to search. So I'm going to search the last 30 days. This will enable the second dropdown to then actually select a specific editing session. So I'm going to click this one here and this will bring in the session details. Here I can click edits and actually see the different edits that took place. So for instance, I can click this add and it will show me this add in green that I added in, during this previous session. And I can also select a delete and it will show the area in red that was deleted. To get back to the default view, go ahead and select this drop down and select this blank area. This will clear the map of the previous session and you will be left with the blue current service areas. Well, let's jump into an editing session. To start editing, click the edit button. This will bring you into an editing session and you will also receive an email letting you know that this code has entered an editing session. To manually draw in new service areas, I will click this green plus sign to draw additional areas. This will enable these other draw tools of point, line, and polygon with polygon being selected as the default. So I'm going to zoom into an area here and with each left click, I place a vertice on the map. When I get to my last vertice, double clicking will then close the polygon and create a green polygon on the map, letting me know that this area is going to be added. Now I additionally want to add in a line. So again, each click adds a vertice. On the last vertice, I double click to complete the line. And as you see here, my line has been buffered. So your lines and points will be buffered by our recommended 500 foot buffer. As you see, if I draw a point, it creates a 500 foot buffered point. Now, I actually don't need to add this point. So I can select this pointer tool here to select an already drawn item. So the polygon is now highlighted and I can select this delete selected geometry button and that will remove that buffered point. 
So now I have these two areas that I want to be sure get added. So I'm going to go ahead and save my drawn geometries. These edits will be saved to my working copy. And as you can see, they're now blue, showing that they are a part of the current copy. Now I have a couple areas down here that I need to remove. So I'm going to select this red minus and select my draw polygon tool. And I'm just going to draw a polygon around this entire area. And as you see, it creates a red polygon and whatever it overlaps will be removed from the map. I'm also going to remove a piece of this line here. And then when clicking save, it will remove those areas from the map. I'm going to zoom out here. Now I have the areas that I just added and they are merged with the current copy and the areas that I removed are no longer there. Now, if I click this show publish button, you can see the changes and the differences between the two. Where they're the same, it's dark yellow. Areas that have been removed from the current but are still published are this bright yellow and areas that are new that have not yet been published show up as blue. I can click submit and it will notify the Oki 811 GIS team that there is a submission to review. Our team will review and approve the changes to be published. Now, say for instance, you actually don't want to submit these changes. Well, if you hit cancel, this will cancel the session altogether be left with your original current copy. So for this instance, say I have some spatial data in GeoJSON, JSON, KML, or a zip shape format. These files can be added to your current areas. So enter an editing session and select the green plus sign. This is telling the system you want to add these areas. Now this will enable a button over here that will allow you to load a file. Click this, it will open your file explorer and I'm going to add this single line feature in KML format. As you can see, it brings that file in as a green polygon. I'm going to save. And that area has been now merged with my current copy. Now I have another area I'm going to add in as well, and it is in GeoJSON format. And again, it comes in as this green line. I'm going to click save and it merges. And you can also, if you click minus, you can still go ahead and remove other areas in that same session. Now I'm ready to submit to the Oki 811 GIS team. Now in this instance, say I just have a file that I want to fully replace with my current service areas. From here, I have my code selected, start an editing session, and I have this upload full replacement button. I can select it and I'm going to fully replace it with the zip file that contains shapefile components. Zoom out here and as you see now it has the area it removed my current service areas and has replaced them with these new areas to be added. And if you're going to be removing areas please leave a note in the session letting us know why you removed areas. This will help our team in knowing why areas were removed and reduce the back and forth correspondence. Now that I have this area here, I'm ready to submit it. I will save. It saves it as a current copy. And now I can submit. This will submit my changes for review and the Oki GIS team will be reviewing the submission. 
And as you see here, I can bring in my published again and see a difference. My published are back here where the current used to be and my new areas are over here in review. Now, if you wanna bring your current service area or your published service areas into a different GIS application, you can do that as well. There's a download service area button that will allow you to download your current service areas or your published service areas. This will download the file in a GeoJSON format that you can then work in a GIS software on outside of the service area editor. While your service areas are in review, you can view other service areas and edit other areas that you are linked to. And if you have multiple codes and you wanna know which ones are in an active session, you can click this show only active editing sessions. This will reduce the list down to only service areas that are in an active session. Once the areas have been reviewed and approved by the Oki 811 GIS team, you will be, get an email letting you know that the areas have been approved. You will then get an additional email letting you know when they have been published. This is whenever those areas are in live production system and you'll begin receiving tickets based on those published service areas.